Long time no see, huh? I turned around to see my ex-husband standing there when I heard a voice scream out from behind, I really didn't want to see him again, especially not in this place, he smirked and said, I heard you're on welfare, making fun of me while his new wife stood by, I decided to correct the record and spoke to each of them, for whom do you believe you are mistaken me, Maggie is my name. And I'm a 35-year-old homemaker, Brian and I have been wed for 7 years, we met after college. At work, and that's how our journey started, Brian was employed as a salesperson at the company where I worked as an office worker, even though at first we were only acquaintances, a fortuitous meeting at a pub let us become more intimate, I was impressed by Brian's sincere desire to spend time with him, which resulted in dates and ultimately a proposal, however. There was a mystery about my family history hidden beneath the surface of our love tale, in spite of how we appeared, my family did. Not show off its affluence, despite living a modest lifestyle, my father, a CEO and real estate landowner, knew exactly who we were, despite the fact that I was frequently contacted by people who wanted to take advantage of my family's money, I was unmoved by their avarice, ultimately, our love story triumphed over any misunderstandings or assumptions based on looks or financial status, despite my wealthy background. I was given a normal allowance growing up, instilling in me a strong sense of financial responsibility, however, people who knew about my family's wealth often approached me, hoping to benefit from it someday, fed up with such experiences, I decided to attend university in Boston, where I could enjoy friendships without the burden of my family background, I chose not to disclose this aspect of my life to Brian, my fiancé at the time, trusting him implicitly, especially since he proposed without knowing about my wealth, I believed it would be best to reveal it later in our marriage, thinking it would be a pleasant surprise when we prepared for our wedding, we visited each other's parents, who approved of our union, my in-laws welcomed me warmly, and we kept the guest list small, intentionally omitting many from my hometown to preserve the secrecy of my family's wealth, after marrying Brian, he expressed his desire for me to be a homemaker, but concerns about our financial future arose, particularly with the prospect of children, Brian reassured me, promising to provide for our family as the head of the household, touched by his commitment, I embraced my role as a housewife, dedicating myself to managing the household while taking pride in my domestic duties, Brian appreciated my efforts and continued to treat me well, cherishing our time together and creating cherished memories, three years into our marriage, I became pregnant, bringing us both immense joy, Brian was ecstatic about the pregnancy, vowing to work harder to support our growing family. However, after the birth of our daughter, our relationship began to change, Brian's attitude towards parenthood shifted, displaying impatience and frustration, particularly when our daughter cried at night, his reactions left me feeling unsettled and unsupported, instead of offering assistance, he would often leave the room, blaming the unpleasantness on the baby, his mood worsened when our daughter's crying disrupted his sleep, leading to arguments about childcare responsibilities, I felt unfairly burdened by his expectations, believing that parenthood should be a shared responsibility, as tensions grew, I questioned the dynamics of our relationship and struggled to reconcile the disconnect between our expectations and reality, despite the challenges, I remained hopeful that we could find a way to navigate this new chapter of our lives together, it's not typical for infants to cry during the night, I objected, sensing that I was unfairly held responsible, my husband's remark, which easily downplayed the difficulties of parenthood, simply made me more frustrated, rather than providing assistance, he started abusing alcohol and working long hours, returning home at an ever later hour every night, I was alone for tense days, longing for his understanding and companionship, my husband's growing absence from our daughter, though I tried to keep things as normal as possible, caused tension in our relationship, our daughter grew closer to me when she got older, taking comfort and security in our relationship, I couldn't help but be jealous of other families who were having fun and going on excursions together, though, I begged my spouse to take some family time because I was desperate to heal the rift between us, but he responded dismissively, calling me a conceited person and highlighting his responsibility as the only provider, there was an uneasy feeling in our house as our stress only grew, but my husband did something that could not be forgiven, and it
was the tipping point. He came home late one night, revealing to me that he was going to divorce me in order to spend more time with this other woman and that she was his lover. I approached him, stunned and stunned by his betrayal and arrogance. Whatever optimism I still had for our marriage was dashed by his callousness. I was disappointed, but I couldn't stand the idea of our kid getting caught in the crossfire of our strained bond. I determined to put our daughter's welfare first as we dealt with the terrible truth of our failing marriage, even as I struggled with the deep sense of betrayal and loss my husband's actions had caused, I reluctantly opened the living room to my husband and his lover so they could talk about our approaching divorce, I begged them to quiet down, pointing out that we needed to protect our sleeping daughter from the intricacies of adult relationships, the mistress, Sarah, showed blatant indifference to the circumstances in spite of my request, her ostentatious clothing only served to highlight her lack of compassion with the discussion went on i couldn't help but be astounded by the situation sarah appeared too ready to make fun of the obvious age difference between her and my husband which was accentuated by her youth in comparison to his advanced years it became clear that she was involved in the betrayal that i was witnessing as well with resignation i agreed to the terms of separation insisting on fair compensation for child support, my husband's callous response only served to confirm the depth of his indifference towards me, his disparaging remarks cut deep, leaving me feeling utterly disrespected and discarded, once they had left, the weight of betrayal crashed down upon me, leaving me reeling with a mix of anger, hurt, and humiliation, packing our belongings in haste, I retreated to the refuge of my parents' home, seeking solace in their unwavering support and understanding while my father offered to intervene. On my behalf, I declined, recognizing that any further entanglement with my soon-to-be ex-husband would only prolong the pain and indignity, resolute in my decision to sever ties with him completely, I focused on rebuilding my life for the sake of myself and my daughter, leaving behind the wreckage of a marriage marred by deceit and betrayal after divorcing my husband through legal channels. I pursued compensation from both him and his mistress, along with securing child support for our daughter, to my surprise, my husband readily complied with my demands, perhaps eager to expedite the divorce proceedings and pursue a future with his new partner. Reflecting on my involvement with such a morally bankrupt individual, I vowed to redouble my efforts in caring for our daughter, knowing that I had effectively removed her father from her life. Returning to my hometown, I began working at my father's company, determined to learn the business and eventually assume the role of president. My father, who had long harbored ambitions of passing the reins to me, was delighted by my decision to join the company. With dedication and perseverance, I balanced my professional responsibilities with the task of raising my daughter alongside my parents. When my daughter blossomed and thrived, excelling in her studies and making friends, I made it my mission to compensate for the joy she had missed out on due to her father's absence. We embarked on numerous adventures, both domestically and abroad creating cherished memories together, witnessing her enthusiasm. And joy brought me immeasurable satisfaction, knowing that I could provide her with experiences that would enrich her life. With each success, I silently defied the doubts and disparagement of my ex-husband, channeling my efforts into proving him wrong. My determination bore fruit as I gradually ascended within the company, ultimately assuming the role of president. Fulfilling my father's dream of expanding the business overseas, I spearheaded the establishment of an international branch. Allowing my parents to realize their desire to live abroad as CEO, I worked tirelessly to enhance the company's profitability, infusing my leadership with a distinctly feminine perspective. Through innovation and strategic vision, I propelled the company to new heights, achieving success beyond what I had initially imagined in doing so. I not only fulfilled my professional aspirations but also validated my worth and capabilities, despite the skepticism of my former spouse when I delved into my role as president of the company, I found myself energized by the opportunity to introduce fresh ideas and reshape our corporate image, particularly in ventures targeting female customers. Our headquarters in New York became a focal point for these initiatives, and I frequently traveled between there and my hometown for work. Leveraging remote interactions with New York executives while making monthly visits to the bustling city during one such visit, while sightseeing with my daughter, a chance 
Encounter shattered the tranquility of our outing. When my daughter ventured into a restroom, I found myself unexpectedly face to face with my ex-husband, Brian. Despite my cold response, he persisted in his casual banter, crudely insinuating that I was living a life of dependence fueled by indignation. I seized the opportunity to set the record straight. Revealing my professional status as an executive director of a major corporation, I watched with satisfaction as disbelief registered on my ex-husband's face, handing him my business card, I relished the moment when he and his mistress grappled with the realization of my success, their astonishment only grew when they learned about the company's recent endeavors, including the high-end skincare products that had caught their attention, in that moment, I couldn't help but revel in the irony of their disbelief, basking in the affirmation of my achievements despite their dismissive attitudes when my ex-husband stumbled over his words. His initial mockery replaced by a newfound respect, I couldn't help but feel a sense of vindication, their perception of me as a mere woman on welfare, had been shattered, replaced by an acknowledgement of my professional prowess and accomplishments with a sense of satisfaction, I bid them farewell, relishing the opportunity to prove them wrong and reaffirm my worth on my own terms, when I resumed my sightseeing with my daughter. I couldn't help but reflect on the journey that had led me to. This moment of triumph, determined to continue blazing a trail of success and resilience in the face of adversity, it had been my dad's business from the beginning, yet your family seemed like any other, yes, we did our best to hide our origins, it's not easy to be famously affluent, for that reason, I kept it a secret throughout our marriage, it helped the divorce go more smoothly, which is great, my assets have surpassed 10 million now that our new ventures have been successful, the revelation made my ex-husband and his lover appear as if they were going to pass out, why didn't you tell me, if I had known, I wouldn't have gotten involved with her, said he, what does that mean to you, because you spend too much money and don't clean the house, are you aware of the amount of money you forced me to spend on name brand items only today, I reposed my question, it's the only positive thing about you, I added. You should be happy to have such a young, attractive wife as me, my ex-husband and, his mistress then got into an altercation, you're drawing a lot of attention here, just so you know, I let them know, angry, they bolted from the scene, my ex-husband later messaged me to say that he wanted to get back together with me after divorcing his mistress, disregarding his message and reporting his harassment to his company, he was incredibly self-absorbed and naive, which shocked me, his behavior became a big deal, particularly because I was the president of a big corporation, he was demoted to a department where he would have little chance of advancement, I felt vindicated because he was finally receiving what he deserved for all the freedom he had robbed me of, at the same time, my baby was developing normally, and I kept up my arduous task managing the firm, I hoped that we would have many more joyful days together and have a rich and rewarding life together, here I am, Karen Sawyer. Henry and I have been dating for four years, and for the past two years we have lived together with the goal of eventually getting married even though we have completed all the necessary steps to legally register our marriage, Henry is adamant that we hold the ceremony first, I would still like to have our marriage registered, even though I think it's fine to hold the ceremony later, I learned this while we were arguing, I was overjoyed to tell Henry that I was pregnant, but he wasn't quite as overjoyed, he scowled, as if he were secretly wondering what could possibly cause me to become pregnant, oh, is she expecting, yeah, I see, he whispered, Henry, I said, that's why I think we should at least register our marriage, why, if we don't register before the baby is born, the child will be considered illegitimate, even if we get married later, the child will be listed as adopted in the family register, that would be so sad, I pointed out, I understand. But I believe it is crucial to follow a specific sequence, such as having the wedding ceremony prior to anything else, Henry responded intently, to prevent the possibility that our child would be deemed illegitimate, I was determined to register a marriage before to giving birth, I brought it up to him multiple times, but he never changed his response, I refrained from bringing up registration as the deadline drew near, I was asked by my friends, aren't you going to get married, are you going to be a single mother, and my parents kept asking, when are you going to get married, however, no matter how many times they asked, I couldn't ensure that he would agree, later on, he remarked, let's register a marriage after all, I was surprised because I remembered how insistent he was that we get married first, just to clarify, 
I reminded him that you said the wedding coming first, I thought that, but if we marry after the baby is born, won't the child be considered adopted, it's weird to think of my own child as adopted, so, I thought it's better to at least register our marriage now, even if the wedding is later. Said the man, while I was relieved that he finally got it, I was worried that he may reconsider if we waited any longer, then why don't we go ahead and register our marriage today? I proposed with enthusiasm, yes, there's a saying, strike while the iron is hot, right? He concurred, yeah, that's true, I responded, half curious about his meaning of, now, I refrained from asking any additional questions. Afraid he would reconsider, and instead made a beeline for City Hall, we waited a long time to hear back from anyone after submitting our marriage registration. Why was it taking so long, I pondered. After what seemed like an eternity, a lady from City Hall arrived and whisked me away from Henry, um, it's difficult to say this, but you're already married according to our register, I was told, Henry interjected, perplexed, huh, what are you talking about, you're married, aren't you, eh, no, but it shows you are in two years of marriage, I've never been married, why would that be? I inquired with confusion, I am not sure, our processing is limited to what is necessary. Could you please tell me who the other party is? The city hall worker asked, a foreign national. I've never met somebody like that, I responded, my confusion mounting. Are you saying you have absolutely no knowledge of this? None at all, if that's the case. Did you possibly lend your name to someone? The employees asked more questions. Why would I do such a thing to obtain permanent residency in the United States? A foreign national can obtain a 10-year green card by marrying in. American and residing in the country for two years, according to the staff, there are instances where people take that action in order to obtain citizenship that is ridiculous, I exclaimed, I don't even know any foreigners, it might then be preferable to speak with the police, staff informed me, under the current circumstances, we are unable to process your marriage registration, this is very awful. When are we able to tie the knot, you can file a marriage with a foreign national guy if you're marital. Status is dissolved, meaning you have divorced him, but please ask the police, as we are unable to provide you with any information here, the staff member said, I fear that I am expecting, that's his child, I said, I get it, but civil law decides it, this is ridiculous, I mumbled in shock, Henry, sensing a disagreement and seeing that I hadn't returned, walked over, I'm worried about you, what's wrong, did something happen, he said, once the municipal hall employees saw him, they strode away as if, they were powerless to stop him, after that, I didn't know what to do, should I be honest with him, if he knew the truth, though, he might back out of his marriage now that he's ready to tie the knot, our child's future is in jeopardy however, I was also becoming increasingly angry, considering I hadn't done anything wrong, why should I be scared, what the fuck is going on with me, I began to run away in shock after exclaiming, hey, what happened, I was taken aback by the unexpected news, he pursued me, eventually caught up with me, and then wanted to know why, his queries were yelled out when he seized me and asked, what's going on, Karen, I can't, I told myself, this is going to escalate into an argument until I tell him, with a steely resolve, I spilled the beans to him about what I had just discovered, name lending, and his soft sigh cut deep into my soul, I didn't do such a thing, I don't know any foreigners, and I wanted to marry you, Henry, there's no way I would do something, like that, I told him, he attempted to soothe me, I know, it's okay, but his face grew pale, I was worried he was thinking of breaking off our marriage, I said, that's why we have to go to the police, we can't let this go, we need to get this sorted out, but he was adamantly opposed to the notion, he stated with conviction that going to the police was unnecessary, why? I'm being prevented from marrying you over something I didn't do, I cried out, he attempted to minimize the situation by saying, but, look, it's not really a problem, is it, not a problem, how can you say that, soon this baby will be born, if that happens, even if we marry, this child will be considered adopted, how can you say there's no problem with that, I said, my anger growing, well, it's just one of those things, these things happen, he said with an attempt to put a grin on his face that would ease me down, still, I remained enraged, what, when this child grows up and sees their family register, they'll think they were, Adopted, no matter how much we explain, they won't understand, that's something we can't help, we'll deal with it when the time comes, said he, his serene expression unsettled me as he proposed, that's just, 
come on, let's not worry about it too much, let's just give up on this, okay? My frustration level was rising, so I answered, how are you able to remain so composed in the face of this? It's peculiar, he said, I'm not calm. But this is the situation we're in, sometimes you have to accept things. But when I looked closer, I could tell he was worried rather than calm, the concept of contacting the authorities seemed to be more important than my purported divorce history, I asked him why, why can't we go to the police, because I didn't understand his hesitation dealing with the police and all that, it's just a hassle, isn't it, what if something happens to the baby because of all the stress, we should focus on making sure the baby is born safely, I'm just worried about you, he then went to get a drink, leaving me to think about what he had said really, going to the police is just a consultation, I can't see how that would harm the baby, even if we consult the police, we can't get married right away, right, if consulting today meant we could marry today, then sure, it would be worth it, but that's not going to happen, right, so, it's a waste of time, he reasoned, my mind raced with recollections of our time spent together, he always found a way to put off our marriage proposals, Whenever I brought them up, upon learning I was pregnant, he showed no signs of joy when my belly continued to swell, he sighed heavily and kept checking the calendar, as if it were an annoyance, to this day, I still don't know why, maybe being married wasn't something he wanted to do, even though I had considered it before, he made the last minute suggestion that we get our marriage license today, to me, it seemed odd, he thinks we should get our marriage license, but he's completely composed. Under pressure, instead of freaking out or blaming me, he attempts to dissuade me from reporting it to the authorities, after four years of dating, I still didn't get him, and my suspicions started to creep up, look, I got you some juice instead of coffee, it's bad for the baby, isn't it, so, drink this and relax, he offered me, presenting me with the glass, I looked up at his face when I accepted the juice and said, thank you, but my concerns persisted, in an effort to address the ambiguity, I said, hey, what did you say, what do you mean, I sensed his forced amusement and asked, did you arrange for me to be married, with a tinge of strain showing on his face, he said, eh, no, why would I do something like that, if I had done something like that, I wouldn't be talking about getting married, right, it's only been two years since that marriage was registered, hasn't it, said he, when my anxiety mounted, I said, two years, that's not something I said, while maintaining my intense gaze on him, as, my anxiety level rose, he continued to inquire, what is it, is there something on my face, without seeming to notice, I said we couldn't get married, however, I made it clear that I never said anything about the registration being two years old, I maintained, my confusion evident, really, no, that's incorrect, you mentioned it earlier, you must have been too upset to remember, Henry remarked, his expression betraying his frustration, his dilated nasal passages betrayed his dishonesty, my breath, caught in my throat as I asked, why would you do something like this, his cruel stare held me captive, it seemed as if he finally gave in and finished his coffee, it can't be helped, you kept talking about marriage, marriage, and from my side, I'm doing all I can, but we also need money, especially if we want to have a wedding ceremony, we just needed the money, he said, defending his actions in a state of bewilderment and wrath, I asked, but I said it was okay just to register our marriage, why? Would you resort to a sham marriage for that, it's fine. Isn't it, thanks to that, we got some money, so that's why I was always looking at the calendar, waiting for the two years to be up, said the man, if everything went according to plan, we'd end it with a divorce after two years, he said, as if the subject were trivial, what do you mean, the end of it, in the end, we can't even get married, I pleaded, my irritation building up, it's not like we can't get married. We just have to wait for a bit, after coming this far, it isn't a big deal, he responded. Calmly, so our child must be born out of wedlock in order for that, are you saying that's not a huge deal, without even getting married, I'm going to have a divorce record in the end, this is absurd, in any case, who are you going to marry, I questioned, feeling angry and betrayed at the same time, hey, you're getting married to me, so what does it really matter if you have a history of marriage or divorce, I am fully aware of it. His voice was frustratingly calm when he added, yeah, having a divorce record may be a disadvantage if you were marrying someone else, one should not take a divorce record lightly, is that right, it's not heavy, who checks a record unless absolutely necessary, 
why do you think this is such a big deal, you're analyzing things too much, it's not as clear to me as it is to you, you truly are very obstinate, attempt to think more creatively, you know. There are still a lot of foreign workers at my company, getting only one person to borrow my name earns me dollar. 5,000, how many tens of thousands of dollars more can we make in the future, you ask, in comparison, a mark on the family register is nothing, why would you act in this manner, he attempted to clarify his behavior, but his words only made me feel more perplexed from what I've heard from my international co-workers. It's possible to obtain a permanent green card by feigning marriage to an American woman for a period of two years, they said that paying an organization to handle the arrangements may cost tens of thousands of dollars, which was out of their price range, they said $5,000 was the maximum amount they could handle when I asked, I consented to facilitate their marriage because it appeared like a reasonable choice, in retrospect, it was a wise decision that brought in $5,000 for us, but I should have known better about the issues that ensued, such being unable to get married right after a divorce. In fact, while I anxiously watched the clock tick down, I kept thinking of reasons not. To register a marriage, you were already worried about the divorce's impact on your mental health as your due date drew near, because they were my own flesh and blood, I was determined that our child would not be identified as adopted for fear of the repercussions of giving birth too soon, I wished the two years would fly by, fortunately, everything started to fall into place. Even though what happened after that was disappointing and unanticipated, the fact that this could smear someone's marital record is terrible nevertheless i reassured you that the situation could be managed with patience and silence we could register a marriage soon without drawing any suspicion despite your concerns about the ethical implications i emphasize the practicality of keeping quiet particularly given the potential benefits for the foreigner involved with some money in hand and the prospect of a future marriage i believed everything would work out fine upon learning that the money had disappeared, my suspicions grew, it was evident that someone engaging in such deceitful acts likely had ulterior motives beyond mere financial gain, my trust in him began to crumble, leaving me feeling betrayed and uncertain about the future, I watched as everything I had known seemed to vanish into thin air, why is it gone, I questioned, feeling a sense of unease creeping in, his response was evasive, mentioning urgent expenses and debts that needed settling, when pressed further, he admitted that not all the debts were cleared, implying that he had used my name to handle them, feeling a sense of betrayal and duty as a citizen, I declared my intention to report the matter to the police, his reaction was desperate, attempting to prevent me from taking action, in a shocking turn of events, he resorted to physical force, pushing me, causing me to fall down the stairs, triggering premature labor. Amidst the chaos and pain, my priority was protecting my unborn child, rushed to the hospital. I delivered safely, but he never came to visit, the realization of his disregard for life, even that of his own child, left me reeling with anger and self-loathing for having trusted him. Upon leaving the hospital, I sought solace and guidance from my parents, my mother's reaction mirrored my own shock and anguish, determined not to forgive his heinous actions, I sought legal recourse. Discovering that his deeds constituted a serious crime, I vowed to pursue justice relentlessly, with a renewed sense of purpose and fueled by a desire for retribution, I resolved to make him pay for the havoc he wreaked upon my life and the endangerment of our child, leaving my newborn in the care of my mother, I embarked on a path to reclaim my dignity and bring him to account for his crimes, I made my way to Henry's parents' house, a familiar place that now felt heavy with the weight of my intentions, it's been a while. His mother greeted me warmly, as she inquired about the baby, I deflected, stating, that I had left the baby at home because I had something important to discuss. Noticing my serious demeanor, Henry's parents grew apprehensive when they asked if Henry was with me. I shook my head, signaling the gravity of the situation. With a heavy heart, I began to reveal the shocking news. I recently went to submit our marriage registration. I started, and before I could finish, Henry's parents expressed their assumption that we had finally tied the knot officially. However, what followed? shattered their expectations, it turned out that I was already married, I continued, their expressions shifting from anticipation to disbelief, I explained the surreal discovery that someone had married me without my knowledge, and Henry was involved in orchestrating it, their shock mirrored my own as I recounted Henry's calculated scheme to secure permanent residency by arranging a fraudulent marriage for me. The revelation left us all speechless, grappling with the magnitude of Henry's betrayal. 
He tried to kill your child, Henry's father muttered, his voice laced with disgust, and nodded solemnly, acknowledging the unforgivable nature of Henry's actions with the conversation progressed. I could see the anguish in Henry's parents' eyes, torn between their love for their son and their condemnation of his reprehensible deeds, they expressed their deep regret and offered their apologies. Understanding the irreparable damage Henry had caused in the midst of our shared sorrow, I made it clear that my visit wasn't merely to inform them but to ensure they were aware of the truth, I couldn't forgive Henry, and I intended to divorce him, I urged them to stay vigilant, wary of any potential trouble Henry might bring upon them in the future, with heavy hearts, we parted ways, united in our condemnation of Henry's actions and the determination to navigate the aftermath with integrity and resilience, we can't just let this go, I stated firmly, addressing Henry's parents if we sided with him. After all this, it would be a disservice to Karen, Henry's father nodded in agreement, acknowledging the gravity of the situation, I think it's only natural for you to want a divorce, he conceded, as parents, all we can do is turn our backs on him, if he comes to us for help, I don't plan on forgiving him, is that okay, I sighed with relief, grateful for their understanding, thank you, I couldn't ask for more. I replied, so, I'll accept your decision as your will, and since he tried to kill our child, I'll make sure he faces justice. Even if it means you'll resent me, Henry's mother looked visibly distressed, torn between her maternal instincts and the harsh reality of her son's actions, it's understandable, I reassured her, but even though I understand her feelings, it doesn't change what I have to do, turning to Henry's father, I asked, can you contact Henry, he nodded, yes, I think so, but why call him here, even if we're going to hand him over to the police, it's better if he turns himself in, I explained, plus, he owes Karen in. Apology, understanding my reasoning, Henry's father agreed to call him over, without divulging the details of my presence or the sham marriage, his mother simply requested his presence, contrary to expectations, Henry arrived, expecting a peaceful meal, however, he was met with a stark reality, his father sternly demanded, why is Karen here, Henry, Henry had confusion on his face, what do you mean, his mother charged, you pushed Karen when she was at full term, Henry made an effort to shift the blame by saying it was just an accident, however, the charges persisted, what about the sham marriage, I spoke up, unable to control my rage, Henry changed in manner, acknowledging his acts without regret, it's not a big deal, he said, rationalizing his activities as little more than helping foreigners apply for U.S. citizenship, how could you do such a thing, disbelieving, I cried out, Henry made an effort to minimize the gravity of his acts by attributing them to my purported fixation with marriage, Registration, I was betrayed and frustrated when I realized I could not reason with him, I made the difficult decision to seek justice regardless of the repercussions, Karen was astounded by Henry's heartless reaction to her worries, she questioned, skeptically, you feel no remorse for what you've done, no, I don't, Henry snidely answered, it's not as if I said that if she were to marry me, I wouldn't, there's no issue, correct, Karen was devastated by his lack of compassion, the issue is that you are orchestrating a fictitious union behind my back, she shot out, her tone marked with displeasure, Henry's facade broke when Karen told him she was not going to marry him, his tone revealed that he was asking with self-serving intentions, what about the child, Karen gave a hard shake of her head, I suppose I can't ask for alimony or child support from you because we weren't married, then, I have nothing to ask of you, Henry gave an astonishing reaction, it's alright, it might not be the best idea, to marry you anyway, he said in jest, Karen was shocked by his lack of empathy, what do you mean, Henry answered, if I married you, I couldn't continue arranging marriages for foreigners, making clear what his true goals were, it's better not to miss out on such opportunities, Karen kept her stance, disgusted by his avarice, she firmly said, I won't be a part of your schemes, Henry's demeanor shifted, resorting to manipulation, you don't want to be pushed down the stairs again, do you, or maybe this, time the child will get hurt, he threatened, Karen refused to succumb to his coercion, I won't be intimidated by you, she asserted, what you did is a crime, Henry, turn yourself in, Henry scoffed at the suggestion, why should I turn myself in, I was helping people, he insisted, deflecting blame, but Karen saw through his lies, you just confessed to pushing me down the stairs, she countered, threatening harm to the child is another crime on top of that, Henry stumbled over his words, realizing the 
gravity of his actions, I haven't done anything wrong, he insisted weakly, determined to protect her child, Karen made a difficult decision, I won't report him to the police, she announced, her voice resolute, as long as he thinks this way, reporting him would be futile, despite her anger and betrayal, Karen chose peace for the sake of her child, when she bid farewell to Henry, she couldn't help but feel a sense of relief that she had finally severed ties with him for good, I'll be departing now. Goodbye, I'll need to find someone else to cooperate with me, enabling me to earn a fortune, investing four years in such a misguided individual proved to be a complete waste of time, however, I wasn't inclined to leave it at that, promptly seeking legal counsel, I resolved to take legal action against Henry, I never promised to let him off lightly, I merely refrained from involving the authorities. Enjoy your descent into chaos, Henry, upon suing him, law enforcement took the matter seriously. The foreigner implicated was deported, Henry, after parting with $5,000 and facing deportation, surely experienced a harsh blow, initially confident he could evade severe consequences with a mere fine, Henry's hopes were shattered when his parents, appalled by his actions, refused to bail him out, they distanced themselves from him entirely, leaving him to endure a five-year prison sentence upon release. Henry faced the harsh reality of unemployment and familial rejection, stripped of any support network, he flirted with the idea of another fraudulent marriage but discovered it was not as easy as he had assumed, left with loneliness, homelessness, and a tarnished record, legitimate employment eluded him, desperately reaching out to me again, I staunchly refused to entertain his request, urging him to seek lawful means of support, as for his current whereabouts and activities, I remain clueless, meanwhile, I've returned to my parents' home, raising my child amidst the challenges that followed their birth, despite the hardships, my child's well-being brings me immense joy, my name is Wendy Collins, married for a year, I received news of my mother-in-law's accident, leaving her confined to a wheelchair, it was my compassionate father-in-law who provided support for my ailing mother-in-law, though I made occasional visits to their house, my father-in-law, weary from work and caregiving responsibilities, tragically fell ill and passed away suddenly, with my mother-in-law now alone. I offered to move in with her, we can't leave mom alone, I insisted, however, George, my husband, staunchly resisted the idea, living in that old, dark house, no way, he protested, George had a penchant for modernity and preferred apartment living, despite his familial obligations, though I recognized my duty to care for my in-laws, George's reluctance to return to his childhood home persisted after our marriage. Initially, I explored the possibility of inviting my mother-in-law to live with us in our apartment, but the limited space made it unfeasible, eventually, after much persuasion, we begrudgingly relocated to his parents' house, the transition proved arduous, despite my exhaustion from caregiving, George continued to make unreasonable demands, you promised to take care of my mom, so do it properly, he'd admonish if dinner wasn't ready upon his return from work, frustrated, he'd storm out to eat alone, leaving me to manage both the household chores and caregiving duties, his criticism only escalated, if the room wasn't immaculate upon his return, he'd berate me, accusing me of laziness, don't use caregiving as an excuse, he'd admonish a good wife cleans up before her husband comes home, I was deeply hurt by his words, but arguing back risked upsetting my mother-in-law, who could overhear from the adjacent room, fearing her sadness, I swallowed my pride and scrambled to appease George, hastily tidying up to keep him content, he'd fly into a rage if the futon wasn't laid out or if the beer wasn't chilled, sending me out to purchase it even in the dead of night, I held on to hope that he'd assist, especially on his days off, but his response was always dismissive, why should I bother with such things, before heading out again, my mother-in-law, sensing the tension, would apologize to me repeatedly, feeling guilty, it's not your fault, mom, I'd reassure her, yet these conversations became all too common. Despite her apologies, our married life remained sorrowful, with the constant worry of my mother-in-law's well-being. I chose to sleep in her room, sacrificing any intimate moments with my husband, despite our desire for children, I couldn't fathom raising them without support, meanwhile, my husband's absences grew longer until he stopped coming home altogether, though suspicions of infidelity crossed my mind, I had no energy to dwell on such thoughts, surviving each day became my priority then, one day, my husband returned with a younger woman, announcing his intention for a divorce, shocked and bewildered, I 
couldn't comprehend his reasoning. What about your mom? I pleaded, only to be met with callous indifference. You can take care of her, he retorted, thrusting divorce papers into my hands. I protested, but he remained adamant, treating his mother as a mere inconvenience. I'm starting a new life with her, he declared, leaving me with a hollow sense of abandonment, forced to sign the papers despite my protests. I watched helplessly when the woman snuggled up to my soon-to-be ex-husband, her happiness. In stark contrast to my own overwhelming emptiness, when he callously discarded his family for a fresh start, I couldn't shake the profound sadness and betrayal that engulfed me, that was not the kind of man I wanted to cling to, take care of the old lady, will you, my spouse left the house after saying such things, leaving a huge void in my heart, why had I done anything I had done up until this point? I was more burdened by the deep vacuum that ensued than by his leaving, abruptly, I perceived. The recognizable sound of a bell ringing from the rear chamber, it was the bell I'd set next to my mother-in-law's pillow so she could signal for assistance if she needed it, I quickly moved to her side, gathering my courage and forcing a grin, I was unable to hide my sorrow from her mom, what's wrong, I asked a gentle question, anticipating her response, her knowledge pierced me when she softly replied, it seems he left. Didn't he? She was sympathetic, but I could also feel that she was. Frustrated by her own powerlessness, unsure of what to say, I walked up to her bedside and she startled me with a suggestion, perhaps we ought to sell this house first, she suggested, a hint of regret in her voice, I was stunned and had trouble putting it into words, but where would we go? I asked, trying to make sense of the abrupt change in the situation, her reply was surprisingly upbeat. I always thought he would leave eventually, and that you would stay, she admitted, however, isn't it? Difficult to take care of me in this house, let's sell it and move into something cozier. Despite my concerns regarding the feasibility, my mother-in-law remained unfazed. She made a determined effort to start the house selling process by making calls, eager to locate a better place to live. She concurrently looked into possibilities for a luxury senior apartment. Don't you think it's a nice place? She exclaimed, clearly excited. There are no barriers present, and the rooms are roomy, there are no more stairs to negotiate at the entryway, I saw a ray of optimism in her tenacity in the face of uncertainty, I knew that with her by my side, we could overcome any obstacles that were ahead, so, is it simpler for you, there's also an outdoor bath, you can have fun with it, but I can't use it, additionally, there is an elegant cafe and a theater, I'm excited for us to enjoy coffee together. Although I could feel my mother-in-law getting excited about our possible new living situation, I couldn't. Get rid of my worries, mom. This location has excellent security. She told me that two women could live here worry-free. But I couldn't help but think about how expensive it was. How can we afford this? I expressed my concerns, finding it hard to understand why she insisted on having such a costly property. It was surprised how she responded. Never fear. You guys are going through a lot with the caring. So I wanted to make things simpler for you, she said. I was moved to tears by her kindness even. Though I had my doubts, after she continued, I wanted to gift you something for all your hard work, the difficulties appeared a little more manageable after making the choice, we started our new life in the opulent apartment, the automatic features and absence of steps surprised me by making caregiving easier for both of us, my mother-in-law was able to roam around without restriction in her wheelchair, and I discovered that it was easier for me to get used to our new home than I had thought. However, the question persisted, why such an expensive buy? My mother-in-law's smile was mysterious when I eventually got up the nerve to ask, my husband really left us a sizable wealth, since life is short, why not live it to the fullest? She asked, shocking me, after a few months, we were enjoying our new home's perks when an unexpected message from an unknown sender disturbed our peace, it said, hey, how's mom? I said in confusion, who is this? I was stunned by the response, this is me, your spouse. Er, my former spouse, we share a residence, what about the family house, though, yes, I visited there lately, and it's now just a vacant lot, oh, we sold it, you made a sale, how on earth are you doing this, mom decided to sell it, and I can't stop it, mom sold it, indeed, selling it results in having no place to live, yes, even after leaving your family behind, you're still worried, however, don't worry, we're doing great. So what did you do with the money from the sale, my mother-in-law grabbed the phone from me at that exact time, who may this be mom, are you okay, well, who could that be, 
I only allow my daughter-in-law Wendy to address me as mom. Who then are you? What topic are you discussing? I'm George, your son you know. My son, my son fled away from home, leaving his family behind for a lady. George, are you that one? I'm sorry. Apologies now won't do us any good. Hi mom, so I understand you sold the house. What did you do with the money? Don't tell me Wendy is holding on to it, that has no bearing on you. I have to admit that right now I'm a little stuck. I really need the money. Well, is that correct? Then, will you kindly lend me some? Please give it to me. How did you behave? I have debts, really. Debts, together with the woman you went out with, you should reimburse them jointly. Well, the debt was something we decided on together. Are we both going to get into debt? Ridiculous Wendy would never allow such a thing to happen. I had nothing to do with it, since I was short on cash, I opted for an installment car purchase, I thought I could make it if I paid a certain sum each month, but when we ran out of money for necessities, things got hard, ultimately, I took out further loans, borrowing money made sense as long as the conditions of repayment were clearly stated, I kept taking out loans to buy the things I wanted, but finally I realized that my debt would only become bigger. When I called to ask why my debt wasn't decreasing, they told me that because of the high interest rates, even if I paid $20,000 a month, the interest would still accumulate and I would still owe the principal amount plus extra interest the next month, creating a snowball effect, what a snowball, you're not smart, I never imagined that things would go this bad, even though I made an effort to pay the interest in full, it kept going up, it's quite difficult, you claim it's difficult, are we not all connected, please assist me, you did nothing to help us when things got hard, rather, you cheated and left everything to your wife, what makes me help someone like that, are you saying that I'm sorry, simply give me the money you received from the sale of the house, not at all, it was already applied to my moving costs, are you and Wendy still living together, how are things going for you, is she not employed, you have to be somewhat financially secure, George persevered and tried every ruse known to man, however, even though I work as a housekeeper for pay, I only do it to care for my mother-in-law, it's basically all costs for my mother-in-law. That is absurd, how are you able to live that way? I don't have to explain that to you, please, in any way, assist me, I have no intention of helping you, my mother-in-law said that and hung up the phone, damn that old hag, George seemed enraged after being turned down and hung up, if she can afford to hire her ex-daughter-in-law as a housekeeper, then there must be money, undoubtedly, there is money, but what can we do about it? Just accept it, proceed there and take something, like the passbook. Yes, exactly, that is the right of a son, after deciding on their strategy, the two managed to locate our apartment building and discovered our address, what, this opulent apartment building, while they're enjoying life to the fullest, we're struggling, what a depraved woman, they attempted to enter the residence, but the security prevented them, the doors must be unlocked from the inside by the residence, we can't get in like this, my mother-in-law and I chose not to answer the phone or open the door after seeing their faces on the monitor, they attempted everything to get inside after realizing it would be difficult, but to no avail, they eventually gave up and called us from outside the structure, hey, where are you now, at home, residing in an opulent apartment while going through hardships, why are you able to reside in such a lovely area, you should not worry about where I live, you didn't help with the caregiving, you just did what you wanted, found someone else, and left, and you're complaining about your own pain now, what irony, please stop berating us and allow us to live in harmony, my mother-in-law has told me not to meet them in any form, under any circumstances, I'm going to be steadfast, I've evolved, who knows, mom could have bought that house after all, it's my right to live there as well, my mother-in-law purchased it for me as a thank you for my perseverance and diligence in the face of the difficulties involved in providing care, remember that you did nothing. You departed because, apparently, you hated the old house and the old people, what a stupid thing to say, oh, I was just tired at that time, whose lips spoke such words, from what are you tired, you didn't do anything around the house, your joke doesn't make sense, I was really tired, tired from talking to other women, maybe, but that's not exhaustion, there were others who were tired as well, I'm sorry, I hated that house this time, I would help out, if only I could live in an opulent apartment. Like this one, just an intention, is that not right? Mom told me not to admit you even if you're her son because you left us, you're looking for a family reunion now, 
Do you really think that after being abandoned like that, she would still consider you her child, you have too much optimism, please don't become upset, you're probably stressed out from handling things by yourself, providing care for someone on your own is difficult, it would definitely lighten your load if you let my wife and I help, thank you, I get along quite fine on my own, you don't have to manage everything by yourself, I'm able to because of this apartment, why are you the only one who benefits from this opulent arrangement, it's unfair, furthermore, it wouldn't harm to partially include us, do you intend to retain all of your mother's possessions, I refuse to permit that, George's wife interrupted at that moment. Sensing the conversation was getting out of hand, I made the decision to call the police since I felt that direction wasn't working, I believed that calling in the police would lessen the hostilities, in response to a report from the opulent apartment, they moved quickly and gave the two people instructions to leave, George contacted me once more after a few days had passed, hey, about Erin, who's Erin, my wife, oh, so that was her name, yeah, she cleared out all the furniture while I was at work and disappeared, how ambitious. The only items left in the room were a divorce decree and a missive expressing her inability to deal with a man facing financial difficulties, wow, very amazing, she herself selected a man who was struggling financially, it's all because you're holding on to mom's money, rewind that, I have nothing to cling to, mother acts in her own way, all I am is a caretaker, no, this wouldn't have happened if you had let me in, you intended to search the house and take mom's bank book, don't you? Do you really believe I'm unaware of that, I no longer have faith in you, thus? Whatever you say, it's not possible, you are to blame for calling the cops, you were outside making a scene, it was bound to happen, you don't even give your actions any thought, I'm alone right now, how is that my problem, can't we start over, huh, you just got divorced, right, yes, but women must wait six months to remarry following a divorce, while men can do so right away, so I can get married again straight soon if I turn in this divorce paperwork, you say you're content, happy about what? Exactly. Why would I want to marry someone again who had recently separated and sure mom will pay off my debts if we get married again, my debts may then be paid off with ease, isn't that a brilliant concept, fantastic, why should we pay off the debt you got from her, how much longer are you going to torture mom, no, I didn't mean to, there is no room for a different interpretation in your proposal, you simply have a different perspective on things, all that matters to me is that everyone is. Happy, I mean, I am her biological son after all mom said blood relations aren't significant, what absurdity, blood ties are very important if blood relations are so crucial, why did you abandon mom so easily back then, impossible, that's because, that's why your wife left you, right, no, that's not the case, she warned us that if things kept going this way, the police would come after us or debt collectors would come for us, so she moved out, broke up with you, and gave everything to you, perfect. I had no idea that she would get divorced and leave everything to me, well, it makes sense, she was your wife, a well-matched couple, each attempting to pursue personal fulfillment, what a horrible woman, I see a boomerang there, don't you suppose that selfishness was a part of you too, I felt that way, selfish, conceited, and without hope, I hoped you would go to hell because of this, yes, I also believe that, that kind of woman belongs in hell, we truly comprehend one another, we ought to get. Married again, my former spouse George looks to be either completely self-centered or carefree, he's been planning to remarry me in order to obtain my mother-in-law's money after his wife left him, you are aware that I do not intend to remarry you, not at all, when we were younger, we were incredibly in love, I think that was a misunderstanding, so you can forget about it, what a cold-hearted lady. I gained some insight into the callous man I married, don't say that, please, please assist me, sorry. But I'm off to the theater room to watch a movie with mom, what, there's another one like that, yes, in addition to the theatrical space, there's a cafe and an outdoor bath, you know, luxury apartments are incredible, I'm going to hang up immediately, please let me in as well, living in a small rented apartment bothers me, I also wish to reside in an opulent apartment, please, say hello to mom on my behalf, okay. I'm going to block you now, hi Wendy, Wendy, you old hag, you damn it, as the call ended, George continued to swear, jealous of the pleasures of the upscale residence, it serves you right, I thought, George eventually tried to get in touch with his mother after I blocked him, but she also chastised him and blocked him, George attempted to re-enter the flat out of desperation for redemption, even after being turned down by his mother and ex-wife, this time, he arrived prepared, 
Dressing like a florist or delivery man, what a wonderful effort, if only he demonstrated it while. We were married, however, it was already too late. He could not enter the flat since he was identified even in disguise when he finally began screaming and yelling in front of the monitor, the building manager decided to report it as a disturbance and contact the police, as a result, George was placed in a cell by the police to cool his heels without anyone to come get him, George suggested me, but I declined because I was now divorced and unfamiliar. The name of his mother came up, she politely declined, citing her advanced age and wheelchair. When his supervisor finally arrived to pick him up after he had contacted a number of individuals, he fired him for stirring up problems George, now jobless and in debt, attempted to work part-time jobs to pay his bills but was ultimately imprisoned for trying to rob a store register, for my part, I'm still content to live with my mother-in-law in the opulent apartment. I've recently made wonderful friends with other elderly people who live in the same building and love each day, right now, I'm overjoyed, Jennifer is my name, my spouse and I have been wed for 8 years, my spouse is a good man who has always loved me, he thinks everything I make is excellent and loves my food, honestly, Jennifer, every meal you prepare is incredibly tasty, I'm the only one who like them, so it feels almost wasteful, my spouse gave me the go ahead to operate a diner, once they came for dinner, they stayed. And we received great reviews on review platforms, there is currently a lunch timeline of people. Waiting outside the diner, without the assistance of part-timers, I couldn't keep up with the daily workload. Today was a really busy day for customers, I owe all of this to your encouragement, I'm grateful, I was thanking my hubby on a daily basis now, however, a university student who claimed to be my husband's mistress called me one day, your husband got me pregnant, what, I became pregnant because of your husband, when, here, when isn't the problem, I will shortly give birth, quickly, this implies that it has to have occurred in the previous 10 months, could something have gone wrong, are you attempting to avoid accountability, I had to leave university as a result of this, that's because, I take it, you didn't utilize birth control, it's not related to me, in my opinion, how can you claim that it's unimportant to you, this was done by your spouse, so why don't you talk to my spouse directly, I find it difficult to handle this, wives need to accept accountability for their Husband's actions, is that accurate, why are you laughing, because my husband would never do such a thing Am ak, there has to be an error, you believe your spouse is not the type of person who would ever do something like that, but the truth is, I'm expecting, what steps will you take to address this, what can I do about it, give me dollar thirty thousand, what, three million dollars in payback. I need $30,000 because I had to leave college, this raises some concerns, are you certain it's my spouse, yes, it's your husband, that's impossible, that's conceivable, it is the reason I'm phoning you, it simply doesn't seem realistic, I met my husband, a very sincere person, at one of my favorite cafes, we didn't even say anything at first, but as time went on, we began to say hello and finally shared tea, that little advancement took more than a year to complete. It felt like there was nothing more that could happen between us after our enjoyable tea time together, it was me, though, who admitted to like him after being powerless. To resist the temptation, what if this makes him despise me, saying he likes someone else, what then, I risk losing the time we have left if I share my sentiments with you, my mind was racing with these ideas, but I also wanted to say how I felt, the only thing I could manage to say, with sweaty palms and a desperate effort, was that, my spouse, it turned out, felt the same way when I came clean, I apologize, this has to be annoying, don't you think, but I simply had to tell you how I felt because, I like you, I distinctly recall feeling like I was about to cry, my eyes heated up, and I felt bad for saying anything, his stillness felt like an eternity, I was like, this is it, I ought to go, I apologize, he said, wait, please wait, as I got up to leave, I didn't know how to react since I was so delighted, my spouse mentioned that while flushed, he claimed that he lost all idea of how to react, he is modest, honest, and genuine, he confided in me that he had been having daily difficulties. Expressing his affection, I was so thrilled to hear this that I started crying in front of him, letting go of the tears I had been keeping back even though it took him a while to ask me to marry him, I waited for him to pop the question because I trusted in him, his offer was straightforward and kind, in a weak, unsure voice, he asked, um, would you marry me, with a small nod, I said, yes, although our wedding was little, I was amazed at how joyful we were when we started our life together, but, 
I've spent the last five years by myself, my spouse was transferred, and I was unable to follow him because I was also employed, I was terrified beyond measure when I was left alone at home even though I used to live alone, I felt as though I had never experienced anything like it, and I was plagued by unanswered anxieties, how could he possibly have a mistress, especially a university student much younger than him? I pondered, it's not even remotely feasible, my spouse would never act in such a manner, it isn't achievable, no, in fact, it could even be preferable if it were feasible, perhaps this is something we should fight about, thus, make the $30,000 payment, there will be expenses after the baby is delivered, yes, there will be expenses, however, my spouse would never be with another woman, why are you able to say that, men are all the same, never assume that your spouse is the only honorable one, he's not especially noble, in my opinion, but he was unable to succeed, he was unable to succeed, that is not feasible, your husband and I, we have that kind of relationship, you know, even now, I have trouble believing it, I just cannot imagine you and my husband being in such a relationship, no matter how hard I try, see speaking, it's true whether you believe it or not, make timely payment of the dollar thirty thousand, I recognize what you're saying, could you first give me your name, well, why am I telling you my name, I should be able to ask that much if you're his mistress, right, all right. It makes sense, my name is Daisy, so, Daisy, where did you meet my husband, sugar dating is what it is, there is no way my hubby could do something like that, that is not the type of person he is, in addition, she hesitates to answer my inquiries now that she was speaking quickly before, is there a new fraud going on here, indeed, I'm taken aback, we fell in love after meeting through sugar dating. We agreed to become mistresses because we were attracted to one another, we've been dating for over two years at this point I see, is there any evidence that your partner is my spouse, please, a demonstration, alright, he shared his address with me, which struck me as unusual because he's typically guarded about such personal information, it's odd, isn't it, normally, he wouldn't divulge his address, but he did so with me, and what about his phone number, do you happen to know my husband's cell phone number? If you're involved in a mistress relationship, one would assume you'd have such details. Right, but strangely enough, I don't have his phone number, we primarily communicate through messenger accounts, there hasn't been a need for phone numbers, but my husband rarely used messengers with me, he always insisted that phone calls were better, emphasizing the importance of understanding emotions through tone and pauses, aspects lost in text messages, your argument doesn't seem to hold much weight, but believe what you will. That's your prerogative, however, the fact remains, I'm carrying his child, hard to believe, isn't it? That's why I'm seeking clarification, enough about that, I'm aware your diner is thriving, and you could easily afford $30,000, right, unfortunately, that's not the case, despite the diner's activity, profits remain slim, yet the woman on the phone insists on payment, seemingly unaware of the strain it puts on the business, sensing the disruption, I agree to meet and discuss further. Though I express the need to attend to business matters first, after hanging up, I reassure the part-time workers that everything is under control a few days later, on the diner's day off, I invite Jennifer over, upon hearing this, the part-time workers, concerned for the diner, show up even on their day off, truth be told, I'm relieved to have such supportive allies, Jennifer arrives, heavily pregnant, and takes a seat inside the diner, thank you for coming, I greet her with a polite smile, though internally, I'm resolved to uncover her true identity, she appears young, perhaps a university student, but her Expensive-looking makeup, meticulously manicured nails, and adorned jewelry hint otherwise, could you please recount the details, I ask, noticing the part-time workers observing from a distance, who are they, Jennifer remarks disdainfully, referring to the workers, they're here out of concern for me, I respond firmly, defending their presence, they're my valued partners, let's refrain from derogatory remarks, Jennifer persists, questioning my need for a support system to confront my husband's. Mistress, how introverted are you? She sneers, it's not like that, I rebut, eager to redirect the conversation, but could you tell me once more how you two met? How did you bridge such an age gap? I've already explained, it's through sugar dating, you mentioned you've been together for two years, correct? Yes, that's correct, then can you provide proof that the child you're carrying is my husband's? I'm telling you, isn't that enough? No, it's not enough, for instance, if you had photos together, it 
might lend credibility, there are no such photos, he didn't want to take any, that's odd, my husband loved taking photos, he always insisted on capturing our moments, it's hard to believe he wouldn't want photos with someone he liked, he simply refused to take them, that much is certain, but the absence of images does not make the truth false, so, what about the documentation of pregnancy? You ought to have some if you are genuinely pregnant, right, are you doubting me? Even with my belly this big, I don't want to doubt, but without documentation, it's hard to be certain I didn't bring any documentation then, it's doubtful that you are actually carrying my husband's child, no hard evidence exists, it also amazes me that you are his mistress, everything appears so hazy, why is everything working out this way, it's the truth, I'm telling you, Jennifer yells fiercely, becoming enraged. The part-timers claim it's not feasible, is the spouse of Jennifer having an affair, not at all, overwhelmed by the circumstances, Daisy keeps airing her grievances, then would you mind looking at this, I get in and take out my husband's phone, this is my husband's smartphone, what is causing you to glance at your spouse's phone, that isn't a privacy violation, is it, maybe, but examining this will make everything apparent, you work as a waitress at a cabaret club, but you say you met my husband through sugar dating, don't you, how do you know that, through this messenger account, this wallpaper, isn't that, your face, exquisitely styled, like to a cabaret performer that was from a university party, I see, you're wearing the same cosmetics right now, it's unbelievable that a novice could create such exquisite makeup, it's quite lovely, is that so? Daisy seemed happy as she grinned, being referred to as gorgeous would make any woman pleased, a typical response, I suppose, I read through every chat that takes place here, too. Only once did my spouse visit the cabaret club where you work, it was there that you served him, following that, you continued to message him on messenger and extend invitations to the club, but he never answered, he was afraid his wife would find out if they exchanged messages on messenger, I wrote it as if I were a regular customer and hostess because of this, since I am his mistress, I would show consideration for that, is that accurate? You appear to be making a lot of effort to get my husband's attention, based on what I can tell about you, still, he didn't seem interested, did he, why then would you choose to be his mistress, that is what I am conveying to you, I was being thoughtful by making sure his spouse wouldn't discover the truth, I wonder if a university student could be that considerate, I am that considerate, so a person as considerate as you, why would you suddenly come forward with this story now, since I became pregnant, although this discussion is from more than five years ago, you have been a mistress for two years, what was the duration of? The gap in years, oh, not much different, we've shared more time together, simply said, our connection has evolved over the past two years, you two need to put more thought into how you live, they are disintegrating, this is a conversation with my husband's supervisor, by the way, in his company, my spouse was well known for being a loyal husband even for business events, he disliked attending cabaret clubs, he only made one grudging trip, I did mention that one instance earlier, colleagues invited him twice after that, but he never went, and his supervisor was telling him you are a really loving spouse, what now, my spouse avoided social situations with women and never made an effort to get in touch with anyone but me, it is therefore difficult for him to engage in sugar dating, yet it did occur, I am therefore powerless to help, perhaps he was sick of you, here, it appears that despite your repeated invitations, he consistently declines them, he's discussing this with his, supervisor, would he not notice you at all, someone who confers with his supervisor about such matters, you're not his mistress, you're simply a cabaret club hostess, perhaps it was just the hostess and patron interaction, I find this really bothersome, it doesn't matter if we met at a cabaret club or through sugar dating, right, the problem isn't the meeting, how you knew our address and why you don't know the phone number are what baffles me, I was wondering about it, but this messenger exchange, makes it obvious, my husband used to talk about me all the time when he and his boss went to the cabaret club, he said, I have a successful diner that I'd like you to come eat at, but that applied to everyone present, not just to you, you chose to call after thinking about the dinner, didn't you, a lie, how can you invent a story like that, all of it is conjecture, isn't it, continue to deny it, perhaps as you get to know my husband it will become evident, there's no need for that, not at all, 
Everything will become evident after you meet my hubby, won't it? If he came across me here, he wouldn't like it, he'd wonder why I had come, he would be so sorry if it became a scene, for this reason, I oppose it, are you comfortable placing him in a challenging situation, you couldn't do it if you truly loved him, I apologize if that is indeed the case, but it's important to be obvious whether he is cheating. I'm against it if it's truly infidelity, but isn't this the only option available? There's no need for that, not at all, you would be better off making things clear, wouldn't you? Please send me the $330,000 right away in lieu of that, you keep bringing up the proof, but accepting responsibility for this child is far more crucial than any evidence, I would leave him after asking for $30,000, if that's fair Miss Peter, a part-time employee, noticed Daisy's obvious panic and said, something doesn't seem right, what's causing your haste, you wouldn't consider accepting money to leave him if you truly loved him and desired to become his parent. Would you cease talking? Individuals have diverse ways of thinking. Stay away from it. Are you genuinely enrolled in college? That also feels a little off. Indeed, several college students work as hostesses, but something about you seems off. What? I attend a university. In reality, I am 21 years old. You are really impolite. I'm going to sue you for defamation. Feel free to sue. But you might be the one who ends up being sued. Why? Perhaps for deception and slander. What is this? It's completely false that the boss and employees were as pleasant as the internet evaluations said, you're really impolite, well, it's not a business day today, why don't you go on a weekday as a client and experience what the reviews say, you'll then see if it lives up to the reviews, however, I believe it is too late for that, this place is full of unpleasant people, it makes sense why your spouse cheated, well, that makes me question, I don't even think my hubby cheated on me, do you really still trust your Husband, while his lover is standing right in front of you, are you illiterate? What can I do? No matter how loud you cry, in the absence of proof, you haven't presented a single item to support your claim that you are his mistress, but I can offer proof. How am I supposed to trust anything you say? Biting her lip in disgust, Jennifer glared at me, determined to obtain the $30,000. She does not acknowledge her ignorance or offer an apology. Despite all the evidence being put forth, it appears that my only option is to initiate my last offensive, I am going to reveal the final secret, I suppose I'm stuck letting you meet my husband, it was not what I wanted to do if you admitted and said you were sorry, I was considering forgiving you, but I'm at a loss for what to do if you don't accept it, by what do you mean, you will no longer be able to justify yourself when I complete this, are you ready for that, so, what will you do now, could you please bring it here, Miss Peter, sure, then miss. Peter disappeared into the back and came back carrying a picture and a memorial tablet, setting them down on the table, I gave Jennifer a direct glance, what, how do you intend to use a memorial tablet, that is eerie, you do realize that this person is supposedly your lover, don't you, what, what is this, this picture and the memorial tablet belong to the same person, and how is that related to your husband, is it not evident that this is my spouse, my spouse died five years ago, he was meant to, transfer for job, but I had to miss work to accompany him, he was exhausted from his work and had an accident on the way home, life really is so short, isn't it, hey, you're saying your lover is a ghost if you're actually carrying Jennifer's husband's child, perhaps you ought to visit a medium, you're bearing the child of a ghost, that kid could be doomed, the part-timers laughed and remarked, that's scary, I wish he could appear to me if such things were possible, but Daisy had a different response, you're only taking this action to refute it, you're attempting to persuade me using an unclear picture and a memorial tablet belonging to an unknown person, it's astounding, despite all the proof being put forth, she continues to maintain that it is my husband's child, it's incredible that you can't even recognize the person you say you love by sight, affection, do children today forget the face of their partner, obviously not, what information can I glean from this grainy picture, you'd hate it if your spouse chews me over you, so that's why you're afraid to bring him out, but I already told you that if you give me $330,000, I'd leave him, thus, that ought to be plenty, enough already, Miss Peter finally gave up and said, do you have any idea what Jennifer has been through these past five years, you come here attempting to mislead and lie like this after she lost her spouse and went through all that pain, there's a boundary to deception, you're the one attempting to mislead with, 
This charade, deceiving others makes you the fraudulent one here, I'm not engaging in fraud, you shouldn't make such accusations just because he's no longer alive, defaming the deceased can still have legal repercussions, and I will pursue legal action against you for fraud, why are you making baseless claims, it's entirely possible to tarnish the reputation of someone who has passed away, Miss Peter, here, is a local attorney who handles small-scale cases, she's the legal representative the diner has retained, why is a lawyer involved, it seems unjust, just as Daisy stood up, a cushion she had been using to feign pregnancy fell to the floor, shocking everyone, I had suspicions about the pregnancy's authenticity, but seeing it disproved by a fallen cushion left me stunned, just as I suspected, the pregnancy was a fabrication, ah, uh, no, it's not like that, Daisy protested, to spread such a malicious lie about carrying my husband's child, Miss Peter dug through her suitcase while I grew. Enraged, she said, this girl is 24, not 21, exposing but another lie, this is such a big lie, so, it is likewise untrue to say that you are a university student, when you previously indicated, there are people in universities who are 24 years old, and some of them work in cabaret clubs, please present your student ID if you continue, most likely, you don't even own one, why did you concoct the story about someone else's husband, I insisted, what a reckless act. Daisy sobbed uncontrollably, claiming everything was real, but Miss Peter could see right through her mask, her comment, crying like that is something you do to manipulate men, was not well received, it is abhorrent to use a deceased person for such dishonesty, Daisy whispered, it's not a lie, but her tears didn't seem real, if you don't stop, I'll inform your parents and the police, I told her, you know the consequences if your parents find out, right, I said, no, Miss Peter, I'm not able to forgive her, she made an effort to damage my husband's standing, or go to the cops, whatever the reason, please, I only needed some cash, in desperation, Daisy admitted, I wasn't really his mistress or pregnant, I had no choice, that's not an excuse for what you did, I shot back, your actions are not justified by your rising indebtedness, acting as if you're expecting, I thought I could easily obtain the money without him ever coming to the cabaret, there would be no contact with him, so I assumed he wouldn't catch on to my Deception, what kind of person does that make me, what were these debts for, well, I desire designer items, yes, it sounds superficial, but in a cabaret club, everyone flaunts branded items, I lacked clientele, and being 24 already, the other girls my age mocked me, I hoped that by wearing branded items, I might change their perception of me, it was just a small act of pretense, but you tarnished my husband's honor for such trivial reasons, even after five years since his passing, you defame him. Now, but it's not right, especially after his death, so, it's better now, right, think of it that way, no, this is unacceptable, I insisted, we're taking you to the police, and we'll inform your parents too, so be prepared, despite her pleas, my decision remained firm, eventually, Daisy faced charges of defamation and fraud, leading to a prison sentence, she was subsequently terminated from the cabaret club. Her parents, upon visiting her in prison, were furious and brought her to tears upon learning about her behavior and employment at the cabaret club, of which they had been unaware, they were shocked by their daughter's actions and lifestyle, when asked why she needed the money, Daisy couldn't admit it was for designer items and instead lied about wanting to study abroad, further trying to deceive them, still, I made the decision to tell Daisy's parents the whole truth. Her parents were so infuriated by this information that they stopped paying her visits in prison until years. After her final release, Daisy thought about going back to the neon-lit world of nightclubs after she was freed. However, her parents were waiting for her to exit the prison, happy that she was going back to her regular life and that they would be celebrating with a delicious dinner. Daisy quickly discovered her parents weren't as understanding as she had imagined. They sent her to live with her stern grandmother in the mountains, deeply regretting their previous parenting style for the ostentatious Daisy, the grandmother's house. Devoid of power and contemporary amusement, turned out to be a more brutal place than a prison, Daisy's grandmother, seeing her depressed mood, resolved to set her right, chasing her around with a stick, in my case, the diner kept doing well, and I was thankful since I thought my husband was keeping an eye on things, every day, I continued to serve delectable meals alongside the part-time personnel, above is today's story, if you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up, see you next time.